The Côte Nord is a vast and authentic region. Each year, hundreds of thousands of tourists come to live the experience of total escape and contemplation while basking in the natural beauty of its attractions. At each step along the way, visitors to the Côte Nord will inquire, linger and seek out what will give their journey a deeper meaning. Their quest for authenticity and discovery must be continuously renewed. It is in this manner that their trip will be both unforgettable and profitable for the tourist industry. The video you will be watching is a training tool designed for you to become better acquainted with the Côte Nord from the touristic, economic and geographical perspective. During the course of the next few minutes, you will be immersed into this vast territory so that you will be better equipped to inform others. When the viewing is completed, you will have the necessary knowledge to provide basic information to visitors preparing to travel in this magnificent region. The administrative region of the Côte Nord is the second largest in Quebec with a surface area of more than 350,000 square kilometers. This vast region has 95,000 inhabitants, spread out across 33 municipalities, 10 Aboriginal communities, and just as many unorganized territories. Situated on the north shore of the St. Lawrence, the territory of the Côte Nord extends from the lower estuary to the Gulf of the St. Lawrence. The north shore of the St. Lawrence is characterized by the great depths of the water and the presence of the cold Labrador current, making it one of the best places in the world to observe the largest mammals on the planet, the whales. The Côte Nord is linked to the other regions by several access routes. Besides Route 138, which crosses the region of Charlevoix before rejoining the Côte Nord all the way to Kegaska, the region is connected to Labrador by Route 389, 500 and 510, and to Newfoundland by the ferry MV Apollo. From mid-April to mid-January, the Bella de Gagne services Anticosti Island and seven municipalities of the Lower North Shore as a cruise or for general transportation from Rimouski by way of Sept-Îles, Havre saint pierre and Natashkwa. By sea, we also have access to the region thanks to the Société des Traversiers du Québec, linking year-round the town of Matane with Bécomo and Godbout. Between the months of May to October, two other ferries cross the St. Lawrence between the Bas-Saint-Laurent and the Côte-Nord. The Compagnie de Navigation des Basques offers ferry service between Trois-Pistoles and Les Escoumins, and the CNM Evolution does the same between Rimouski and Forestville. Certain municipalities of the Côte Nord are also accessible by air from Montreal, Quebec and Rimouski, while the company Chiwetin provides access by train from Sept-Îles to Emerald Junction near Fermont and Shefferville. Rich with a vast hinterland, the economy of the Côte Nord is largely focused on the exploitation of natural resources. Forestry, mining, fishing, and the production of aluminum and hydroelectricity constitute the principal industrial sectors and employ close to 15,000 qualified professionals from various fields. Concentrated for a long time in Tadoussac, the Côte Nord tourist industry has developed over the past few decades. Today, it is an important economic engine for the Côte Nord. The restaurant and accommodation sector alone counts more than 3,500 jobs in the region. Let us now turn our attention to the different components of the North Shore tourism. As the Côte Nord is a maritime region, a large part of its tourist offer is focused on the St. Lawrence. Therefore, it is not surprising that the first thing the majority of visitors are looking for are sites with great panoramic views as well as taking a seaside stroll along the beach. The tourist offer of the Côte Nord is composed of the following products. The beaches of fine golden sand as far as the eye can see. The cruises and excursions to observe the whales and visit the archipelagos. The museums and interpretation centers regarding marine life, archaeology, Aboriginal culture, science and regional history. The events and festivals the numerous hiking trails along the St. Lawrence and in the hinterland, the large hydroelectric dams, the national parks, the numerous outfitters, 
ZEX, Wildlife Reserves and Protected Territories. Snowmobiling and Winter Recreational Activities. Regional Flavors and Local Products. And lastly, we would like to point out that three of nine ports of call on the St. Lawrence are situated on the Côte-Nord. Havre Saint-Pierre, Sept-Îles and Bécomo, not counting Tadoussac and its emergence as a port of call. We are now ready to take a closer look at the Côte-Nord. We now start our tour of the Route des Baleines in Tadoussac. Here we are in the major tourist pole of the Côte-Nord, Tadoussac, including the municipalities of Sacré-Cœur, Bergeron, Les Escoumins and Essipit. Gateway to the Côte-Nord and located on the banks of one of the most beautiful bays in the world, Tadoussac is an international tourist destination and is an integral part of the travel itinerary for a significant portion of the European clientele. The main attraction of this important tourist pull lies in the abundant presence of marine mammals, which can be observed from shore or while on an excursion at sea in a kayak, zodiac, or boat. In Tadoussac, as well as in neighboring villages, we find a large number of accommodation establishments and restaurants, such as the Hotel Tadoussac, a historical building anchored in the heart of the Bay de Tadoussac. A genuine sign of the appeal of Wales is Tadoussac being a part of the Parc Marin du Saguenay-Saint-Laurent. For the benefit of present and future generations and for the purpose of conservation, the mission of the marine park is to increase the protection level of the ecosystems while favoring educational, recreational and scientific activities. The activities practiced in the marine park are structured with the perspective of sustainable use. The regional stakeholders also participate in attaining the objectives of the marine park. As we travel the Route des Baleines towards Forestville, we pass through the municipalities of Longrive and Portneuf-sur-Mer, both recognized for their vast expanses of beach and shoal. It is also a sector that is highly sought after by ornithologists. The winds also make this zone ideal for wind and sliding sports. From Les Escoumins, Forestville is the second gateway to the region, linking the region by sea to Bas-Saint-Laurent. Forestville is a service hub and is accredited as a village relais. The Tourist Information Center is open year-round and therefore offers a showcase of the region in both summer and winter. On the way to Bécomo, the Manicouagan Peninsula, composed of the municipalities of Ragnon, Château Zoutarde, Pointe aux Zoutardes and Pointe le Bel, proposes the Route des Plages an immense delta at the convergence of large rivers Manicouaga and Outarde. The peninsula is also fertile ground for food tourism with its numerous regional products in addition to offering the ideal water for summer swimming. At the heart of the Réserve Mondiale de la Biosphère Manicouagan Wapishka, Bécomo counts a population of 23,000 inhabitants and stands out thanks to the diversity of the services offered. The Heritage Town Center is dynamic and is close to several tourist attractions. A must-see attraction in Bécomo, the Jardin des Glaciers, offers visitors a chance to discover and understand how the Côte-Nord was forged from the thaw of glaciers that covered North America more than 20,000 years ago. Art history lovers will rejoice while admiring the magnificent frescoes in the Church of Saint Amélie, painted during the Second World War by international artist Guido Ninkeri. It is a heritage site where the works of art are the envy of the greatest connoisseur. Bécomo also offers magnificent hiking trails, beaches, and boat tours for whale watching and exploration of its industrial harbor. Lastly, this town is the gateway to Route 389, leading to the large hydroelectric projects in northern Quebec. We will get back to that later. To the east of Bécomo, still along the Route des Baleines, the panoramic views of the St. Lawrence are among the most impressive. We are entering into the panorama sector. Franklin, Godbout and Bétrinité offer attractions relating to a precise aspect of St. Lawrence maritime history, shipwrecks. 
It is also possible to learn about the Aboriginal culture as well as life in the forest for the first workers of the Côte Nord. The Route des Baleines continues for more than 1,000 kilometers. Along the way, six tourist poles stand out. Port Cartier and Sétil, Rivière au Tonnerre, Anticosti Island, Of Saint-Pierre, Natashquan, and Blasa Blanc. In Port Cartier and Sétil, visitors are welcomed by long natural beaches. This sector contains two of the most important municipalities of the Côte Nord and stands out with a rich diversity of culture, services and outdoor activities. Situated along the Gulf of St. Lawrence, Port Cartier with its 6,900 inhabitants is a reflection of the Côte Nord nature. The parks de la Taiga, de la Rivière au Rocher and the Promenade du Petit Quai are all situated close to accommodation and restaurant services. On the outskirts of the municipality, the Base de plein air des Goélands and the Réserve Faunique de port cartier sept are dedicated to outdoor activities, hunting and sport fishing, as well as offering various accommodation possibilities. With approximately 27,000 inhabitants, sept offers all of the services of a modern town and is an essential outdoor destination. Boat tour operators offer excursions at sea to visit the Setil Archipelago, as well as a possibility of stopping on the Grand Basque Island for a hike or for some wilderness camping. The Promenade du Vieux Quai is the site of festivals and outdoor events in the summer. The town also has an 18-hole golf course and a renowned salmon river, the Moisy. Sept-Îles is an exceptional cultural showcase for the Côte Nord with the Musée Régional de la Côte Nord, the historical site of the Vieux Poste, and the Chapoutouane, who offers an overview of the culture of the Innu communities Washat Manyutinam. It is also possible to visit the installations of Aluminerie Alouette and the Compagnie Minière IOC. To the east of Sept-Îles, we head towards the tourist pole of Rivière au Tonnerre, situated in Mangani. The coastal municipalities of this sector offer a series of unique cultural, heritage and outdoor experiences. In Rivière au Tonnerre, you can take a maritime shuttle to Anticosti Island. You can also find Cost, cooperative for a sustainable tourism environment, a receptive travel agency that can provide turnkey travel packages in the region. Close by, Rivière Saint-Jean offers cruises to the Manga Islands or Anticosti. Sitting proudly offshore, Anticosti Island is renowned for its immense, almost untouched territory and the impressive population of approximately 160,000 white-tailed deer. Its national park protects the spectacular natural attractions such as the Chute Vauréale, the Rivière Observation Canyon and the Grotte à la Patate. Anticosti Island also conceals exceptional flora and fauna. Between Anticosti Island and the mainland, the Mega Archipelago deploys its strings of islands across some 175 kilometers. Characterized by its famous monoliths, the archipelago offers one of the most amazing natural landscapes of eastern North America. Visitors to the Réserve de Parc National de l'Archipel de Mingan will find, at the information centers of Longue Pointe de Mingan and Havre Saint Pierre, among others, all necessary information regarding access to the islands and the transportation services. These two municipalities also offer accommodations, restaurants, and excursions. Route 138 continues and passes through the municipality of Bejouan Beats, where several hiking trails are suggested. Approximately 50 kilometers further, it is worth stopping in the municipality of Aguanish to discover the impressive Tredesi Canyon, a natural fault through which the Aguanish River runs. Lastly, Natashquan is a well-known village thanks to the poet and singer Gilles Vigneault, and the Festival du Conte et de la Légende de l'Incadie that highlights the Innu and Acadian culture. Several other attractions retrace the history of the village and its rich heritage. As of 2013, Route 138 continues until the small village of Kegaska, gateway to the lower north shore. 
the Route des Baleines becomes the seaway of the St. Lawrence before reconnecting with the road network near Blanc Sablon. The immense territory of the lower North Shore, home to some 5,600 inhabitants spread across 14 Anglophone, Francophone, and Aboriginal communities, is primarily accessible aboard the Bella de Gagny or by plane. Several bird sanctuaries punctuate the coastline, where you will also find the villages of Harrington Harbour, with its wooden sidewalks, Chevry, where you have access to guided tours, and Tête à la Baleine, where you will find the chapel of Lille Providence, erected in 1895. From Blas Sablon, visitors can travel along the Chicoute Scenic Route, for a distance of 75 kilometers. Along this panoramic route, the seafood products, berries, as well as cultural and outdoor activities are featured. Several types of accommodations are also available. Visitors in search of an adventure can take the Circuit Grand Nord by way of Labrador along routes 510 and 500. In Fermont, you must visit the open pit mining complex of Mont Wright and the 1.3 km wall, a building that is unique in North America. The nearby hiking trail and observing the northern lights are also part of the town's tourist offer. Lastly, after a journey of more than 2,000 km, Route 389 brings visitors back to Bécomo in the region of the Côte Nord Manicouaga. On the way, there are, of course, the large hydroelectric projects of Manic Outard, which make up both a facet of Quebec's industrial history and a must-see tourist attraction. Please note that the visits of Manic 5 and Manic 2 are completely free of charge. In between the Route des Baleines and the Circuit du Grand Nord, the hinterland of the Côte Nord is filled with vacation sites where hunting and fishing enthusiasts can practice their favorite sport. In fact, the Côte Nord counts 82 outfitters and 8 control harvesting zones commonly referred to as ZEC. This makes it one of the regions of Quebec with the greatest number of vacation territories dedicated to hunting and fishing. We hope that this bird's eye view of the Côte Nord has allowed you to learn more about this vast region and its touristic, geographical and economic profile. The key elements that have been presented to you will be of great use to you when orienting visitors in search of discovery. Always keep in mind that all tourist travel on the Côte Nord are dependent on the following factors. The travel distance between point A and point B, the weather, the presence of road work, and the ferry schedules. Other important factors to consider before suggesting activities to visitors. The period of the year, as well as the time of day and tides. At your service seven days a week during the summer, the tourist welcome and information centers of the Côte Nord will be happy to answer your questions in order for you to provide the proper information to visitors. If in doubt, do not hesitate to suggest the nearest welcome center. No matter where you are, a well-informed visitor is more likely to lengthen their stay. Take advantage of their presence to contribute to the development of our tourism industry.